on this episode of the Jeff Does Vegas podcast. There's another local filmmaker here, uh, Jonathan Hensley, who's written Jumanji, Die Hard, uh, Con Air, the, the Rock. He's an EP. He's, he's a big filmmaker, but he happens to own a bar that used to be across the street from my production office downtown. And we became friends and he's kind of my mentor. And just this spring, we were having coffee. And I think I brought this idea up and he said, why are you not doing that? How, how, who's doing it? Like, why is, can you do it better? And I said, well, from what I've looked into, nobody's doing it. Las Vegas. It's more than just a city. It's a feeling. It's that feeling of excitement when you spot the lights of the strip out the airplane window. It's that feeling of awe as you stroll down the boulevard, taking in the sights and sounds. And it's that feeling of satisfaction knowing that you're in the greatest city in the world. Over 42 million people from around the world share that feeling every year. And I'm one of them. Taking you to the world-famous Vegas Strip and beyond, my name is Jeff, and this is the Jeff Does Vegas Podcast. Hey there, and welcome to episode number 97 of Jeff Does Vegas. Before we get rolling for this episode of the podcast, I want to thank my guests from the last episode, Jordan and Ashton, the hosts and creators of Show Me Vegas, a very cool Las Vegas vlog that you can find on YouTube and Facebook. We discussed what sparked their love for Las Vegas, what inspired them to start vlogging their Vegas adventures. They shared some of their top picks for favorite hotels and restaurants and much, much more. If you haven't checked it out yet, jump into the archives at jeffdoesvegas.com or search out episode number 96, Show Me Vegas, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, here we go. On to the show. Sin City has served as the setting for literally dozens of movies over the last 75 years. Drama, comedy, horror, action, films of every genre have used Las Vegas as a backdrop. And if you've ever wanted to visit the spots where some of your favorite Vegas movie scenes were filmed and get the backstory about those scenes, my guest for this episode of the podcast has you covered. Chris Ramirez is the CEO and founder of Las Vegas Movie Tours, a brand new tour experience that takes riders from the Vegas Arts District through downtown Las Vegas and along the famed Vegas Strip, showing off the spots that served as pivotal points in some of the biggest Las Vegas set movies of all time. Chris and I discussed his background in film as a producer and location manager, We talked about why filmmakers are attracted to Las Vegas as a location, what inspired him to create Las Vegas movie tours, and much more. Please enjoy my conversation with Chris Ramirez of Las Vegas Movie Tours. I grew up, uh, I'm from Las Vegas, and um, so I, I, I took a very um, long path to, to getting finally into the production business, film production, and, and so it was, it was, it was almost a process of elimination. I, I living in Las Vegas, I, I did everything. I owned a valet company, I dealt cards, I worked in a restaurant, construction, I did everything in the city. Um, and finally, it brought me to what are you actually interested in? And, and movies um, was, was that thing. And, and so without a big industry here in Las Vegas, when I, when I broke in around 2004 or five, um, I was really fortunate to just know a person, a, a guy from my high school that was a little bit older than me that had gone out to Los Angeles His father-in-law was a producer, so he kind of got that real experience. And then he came back to Las Vegas because some friends of our families and associates of of our high school were the Fertitas, who owned the Ultimate Fighting Championship and and the the Stations Casino. So they financed the first couple of movies, so he came back to Las Vegas to make them, and and I I just bugged him to to hire me, and uh, and he did, luckily. And so that was... um, how I first got into my first couple of movies and, and then I stayed on as his assistant. So I got a, a little bit of insight into, because we had big um, 
backers, uh, exec producers, we had real agents out in Hollywood. And so I got a, a glimpse into what that world is and what it takes to really kind of crack that nut um, money. That's really And so uh, uh, then I just tried to hang on and just tried to work. And, and that was right about the time that the hangover came here um, and Disney's race to which mountain. And it was like a little bit of a boom, uh, 2006, seven, eight, nine, and, and a few indies during that time. So yeah, then I just became kind of, you know, the guy, Hey, if you're going to Las Vegas, call, call Chris. So you mentioned hangover and race to Witch mountain. These are a couple of movies that you've worked on. Um, what capacity did you have working on those films? And then um, what are some of the other movies that have shot in and around Las Vegas that you have been involved with? Yeah. So the, on those first couple of jobs, which were for that producer, I mentioned were uh, standing still Vegas baby. And then his third one was Yonkers Joe, as well as the, the bigger studio ones, race to which mountain and the hangovers. I was a location scout. And on the first hangover, I was second unit location manager. So all those scenes with the, um, Silver Mercedes driving down the highway, coming into Las Vegas. That was me uh, usually driving with the Nevada Highway Patrol and and kind of leading the silver car. Okay, we're going to go here. Okay, we're going to flip back and radioing. And so, yeah, it was fun. And, and, and you didn't know that it was the hangover at the time. You know, it's just, hey, cool. I'm working on this movie. This is cool. Um, but had no idea it was going to be, you know, the highest grossing comedy of all time. Yeah. Right. Um, let's talk a little bit about Vegas as a filming location. I mean, this question might have an obvious answer, but what is it that attracts filmmakers to Las Vegas? Uh, well, I mean, you know, Las Vegas is, and I, I really, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Growing up here, I figured what I'm about to say was going to lose its meaning at some day. And it, it never really has is there is nowhere quite like Las Vegas. And so from a visual aspect before the, you know, the last really decade or, or less of, of, of tax incentives that have drawn a lot of work out of, out of any state, much less Las Vegas for authenticity, but visually it, it used to be very hard to recreate Las Vegas. You really had to come here if you wanted the lights and the, and the, and the, and the properties on top of you and the, and the big casinos, not so much anymore. But but also I think why filmmakers you know even from commercials to to features um, and everything in between have always come here is because there's a bit I think of a I don't want to say a cheat or a jump in storytelling and in in that if you set your movie in Las Vegas or your characters are heading to Las Vegas or your car commercial is featuring you know driving by the Bellagio Fountain there's almost an immediacy to your audience of, 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 we all know what we're doing. We all know why we're here. We, and so I, I think if you start that in Washington, DC, or you start that in Seattle or Chicago or Vancouver or wherever, I still think you're, you still have to tell the audience, okay, this is why we're here. But, but I think Las Vegas, just immediately, everybody kind of knows, oh, oh, it's Las Vegas. Let's see what's going to happen. That's a that's a fair point. And as you say, I mean, up until very, very recently, you really couldn't um, recreate those exteriors of the strip and the lights and everything um, with the use of technology or, or whatever. Um, but the, the interior shots, you don't have to be in Vegas for those to work. I mean, they you could realistically be doing interior shots on a soundstage in Los Angeles or somewhere here in Canada. You can, but those of us with the eagle eye and as a location scout, it's it's still pretty obvious. You know, the, the ceilings are lower. The, the, the grandness and the grandioseness of Las Vegas is, is obvious to those like yourself who I think really love Las Vegas, but you can do it. Yes. And, and I think the other thing too, and maybe this is something that as a, a frequent Vegas visitor annoys me at times is when filmmakers try to cheat with the geography of Las Vegas to a certain degree. One of the ones that's always kind of driven me absolutely batty is the movie last Vegas when they are walking along Las Vegas Boulevard, they're walking past the Mirage, they're heading north, and Michael Douglas comments about making their way to the Aria. 
every time I watch that movie, I'm screaming at my TV. You're yeah. going the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's it's. I'm glad you do too because I thought I was and me and, and especially our writer Jeff Carter who, who wrote this this art tour script and is a the editor of the Las Vegas Weekly and lots of great publications here over the years. He and I are sticklers for that stuff, but we just wondered, is it only us? So it, it is nice to hear non-locals care about that. Another one that we think is funny, and I had to do a lot of editing in our, in our clip we show on the tour, is Con Air. I mean, that plane is, is going past streets and casinos you know on its way to its eventual uh, crashing into the sands i think it was um that 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 it should never pass or yeah you know, i think the hard rock goes past and so yeah i'm glad i'm glad to know it's not just again it's not just me it's other people that are doing the same yeah. thing um any idea on how many movies have been shot in las vegas over the last 70 years when we started this idea, this project, we to, to build from, to write from, we started this spreadsheet. And I think it grew to over 200 features, television shows, and music videos is the way we um, caption it. So, so yeah, I think it's, it's, it's in that number. Um, and then, I mean, just the, the number of feature films alone that like you could roll off the top of your head from, from, the Las Vegas story in the forties and be the Las Vegas and, 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 and the early ones to now, you know, I mean, almost, yeah, you know, we're not, we're on audio, but I know you can see the video. I have posters in this office of everything from showgirls to Paul Blart to the rush hour race, which mountain and the hangovers and, and what happens in Vegas. So, I mean, I think even the ones that you can kind of roll off, you know, if you were to do a trivia contest and say name 10 Las Vegas movies, I feel like there'd be a lot of people who could do that, you know? So it's almost its own genre. I think it, it, in a way, I would imagine that actually filming in Las Vegas has got to be a logistical nightmare. Yeah. I mean, yes. And so when I used to have a production services company, um, which I founded, you know, back in 2012 after doing locations on several movies and then trying to pitch my, people hiring me on locations. Hey, can I hire the crew for you? Can I find gear for you? So eventually I founded a, a, a production service company uh, here and, 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 and working with the Nevada film office. And we were also, you know, a bunch of us, including Nicholas Cage, who's a local resident at the time, we're trying to pass tax incentives. So my, my pitch used to always be, you know, it's, ve- it's easy to film here, come to Las Vegas, we'll make it easy for you. Because that was, you know, we were trying to bring the business in, but but it is hard. And I mean, it's hard a, a lot of places. And, and I would say the one easier thing about Las Vegas is that people are very friendly and open to letting you film at places, which is different in, than places like New York and Los Angeles, because they're still kind of starstruck and still love the action of, oh, hey, they're going to close our restaurant. Dynamic. It did get harder, though, you know, with now that there is booms in restaurants and bars to, to kind of close these places down that even I used to have an easier time. Um, so logistically yes casinos are very picky about what they let film there especially if they're going to feature the property or if you have deep pockets and want to just pay to to film there which is difficult then you still have to figure that out logistically with when you can do that which is usually just over late hour nights so you're breaking up your shooting schedule your actors your your it, it gets very difficult and 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 then same with which would I, which I've done and 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 uh, other films have done and Jason Bourne I think was the last was shutting the strip down just doesn't happen anymore. Mm-hmm. It used to be able to be able to be done you know for some big movies and then even on Hangover Three where Chow parachutes um, over the Bellagio fountains but he ends up if you eagle eye if he, he lands at the plaza and the reason why is because we couldn't get the shutdown we needed. We couldn't get all the approval of the properties we needed for him to land on the strip. We would have had to close too much down. And so um, I, I suggested because I, I lived and worked and my offices were downtown. I had relationships with downtown casinos that, hey, I think that nobody will notice. I'm sorry, you're going to hate me for that. Nobody's going <laughs> to notice if, if Chow lands here. Plus, it's so visual. You know, one thing that I, I learned over the years when I was scouting and I would filmmakers would come in from all over the world and the, the cameraman and the DP would scout with me and 
they'd say, all right, we want to go to the strip and we want to see neon. And they, you, you take them and they realize there's not much neon on this strip anymore. So I'd say, well, come check out downtown. And they would come. And, oh, yeah, this is what Las Vegas that I picture is. is That's where the neon, if you want it reflecting on your car for the car commercials, it's, it's kind of where you got to go. Yeah. It's interesting that you bring up the the novelty of movies being filmed in a city and how people in Las Vegas still kind of they don't get aggravated by that. I mean, I have friends that live in New York and Los Angeles. And when you talk to them and they talk about how uh, I got stuck in traffic because they were filming a TV show or a movie and I had to get detoured around and uh, as opposed to. I mean, here in, in Calgary and just north of us up in Edmonton, um, we just went through having the uh, the HBO series, The Last of Us, based on the video game, was shot. Um, some pretty significant amount of shooting was done uh, in Calgary and in Edmonton. And just outside of Calgary here in southern Alberta, uh, two years ago, we had the new Ghostbusters movie filming. And people almost took it as a, a point of pride if they got stuck in traffic because a movie was being filmed. They're they're actually excited about that as opposed to, as you say, places like L.A. and New York, where it's just it's the the height of aggravation. Yeah. Yeah. And it, I mean, when we did uh, when I was really active and, and had some partners again with Deep Pockets. So we produced a couple of movies, uh, one called Frank and Lola and, and one called Vienna and the Phantoms. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Like Frank and Lola, not only did Steve Wynn let us film at the Wynn and Encore at the time, which was, would have been unachievable on our budget had he not, um, then, but we also used a ton of little places that are were close to my heart, like this new restaurant that had opened at the time called Cars Kitchen and my tattoo shop that I go to all the time, downtown tattoo and the bars and the streets. And the, and so when you watch that movie, it really is this kind of, uh, for people like me and people who love our city and love downtown and that you can watch it and really see a snapshot of, of what it was like at that time. And so, yeah, I think even, you know, for your town or for, you know, anywhere that, that, that still has that small town vibe, which Las Vegas is just kind of growing out of. Um, yeah. Those are kind of magical moments. It's fun to, to see the community kind of come together and use a, a bar you've always known or use a friend's restaurant and then everybody's going to see it in, you know, on HBO or wherever. Yeah. That I, I loved, I miss I really do miss being a location scout and it was one of probably my favorite times. And I didn't know it at the time, but it was one of the most creative times um, in, in this industry of, of working with people on what, what they're going to see, where you're going to film. Uh, Chris, I wanted to get you on to talk about this brand new venture that you've launched called Las Vegas Movie Tours, which is such a cool idea for those who may not be in the know. Uh, the gist of it is you load people into a, a tour bus, which is essentially a movie theater on wheels. You take them around the city of Las Vegas to some very famous locations that have been featured in uh, Vegas related movies. You tell some stories about those spots let's start at the beginning on this, which of course is always a logical place to start. What was the inspiration behind creating Las Vegas movie tours? I mean, this seems like something that should be a no brainer for the city of Las Vegas. It, it, well, yeah, that's, I think that's, it's funny. That is the answer. And also what kept me away is, um, everything we've been talking about, you know, years in the production business. I love Las Vegas. I love Las Vegas movies. I love this whole intersection that we're talking about, but, and I had this idea. I said, I had this idea. This is not reinventing the wheel, the movie tour, but I had this idea about, I wonder if it would work here a few years ago. I even met with, you know, the mayor who was a big you know proponent of movies in Las Vegas and what we used, what I used to be in. And so and then I just thought, it just seems like low hanging fruit. You know, I'm pretty much born and raised here in Las Vegas. I've never done anything tourist facing, which is probably why I've never made any real money in this town. Um, and so it just kind of seemed like, yeah, that's just not my thing. I just, I don't do that thing. And, I, and, and so I tabled it, but I have a, there's another local filmmaker here, uh, Jonathan Hensley, who's written Jumanji, Die Hard, uh, Con Air, the, the Rock. He's an EP. He's he's a big filmmaker, but he happens to own a bar 
that used to be across the street from my production office downtown and we became friends and he's kind of my mentor. And just this spring, we were having coffee and I think I brought this idea up and he said, why are you not doing that? How, how, who's doing it? Like, why is, can you do it better? And I said, well, from what I've looked into, nobody's doing it. Um, so yeah. And then I just, I've always been pretty entrepreneurial and I kind of really am not that in the movie business any longer. I've kind of stepped aside from that. And so I did need a new project and it kept bubbling after he and I spoke. And so I reached out to someone I mentioned, Jeff Carter, who's a writer here and just a really respected, creative, knowledgeable person that I, in this city and in this, you know, industry of, of writing anyway. And, and I know he loves Disneyland. He loves Las Vegas. And he loves movies. I thought if he's into the idea, it probably has legs. And I pitched him on it and he, and he was into it. And so that's kind of where then we said, all right, let's start doing this. And, and then we've taken about six months to kind of figure out what it is. You know, this is not like one of the only ones I've been on is Universal Studios um, and you take the back lot tour and the tour guide and in 1960 something over here is the lot and blah, blah, blah. And I think the reason we are able to shape it into at least that idea is because Las Vegas might be in the only city, like all the places we've talked about that, that you could really do one track of road, which is the Las Vegas strip and point left and right and talk about which movies were filmed where. And, and I think that's pretty unique in another city, New York, or even LA or somewhere, you, you really would have to take people like the stars of the you know, tours home or tours tour of the stars homes. You know, you got to take them around and, and, and with ours, we really can, we can adjust it and we can change the route however we want, but it really is a straight shot down the strip. So um, it just really start. That's, that's kind of how it, 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 it took form and, and now we have to make it work. <laughs> yeah, so we're just constantly making it better. We just, we launched um, and, and then we just keep working on it. And so even right now, after our podcast, I've gone back to, to work on a, you know, a revision that we're going to try to get out for this weekend's tours. And yeah. So that's the background on the idea. There's lots of other tours of this type in Las Vegas. I'm, I'm thinking mainly of the various mob tours and ghost tours and, and things like that. What is it that really sets Las Vegas movie tours apart from, um, those types of tours? Uh, yeah. In fact, a couple of our tour guides have worked at the ghost tours at the mob tours at the, um, neon museum, uh, um, uh, boneyard tour. So, uh we i would you know i try to learn from them on on what this tour business really is and what works because that is very new to me um and so i would say what 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 what, what from what i've heard is that's silly me i've never really been on any other tours to see what people are doing um but we have really, I think, immersed our guests in, like, as you mentioned, a theater on wheels. So, so not only is our tour guide location based, giving location based information, if you look out your left and if you look out your right, um, but the screens that we have inside the shuttle are playing clips, they're playing graphics um, at times similar to the Fremont Street experience. If you've been there where we have like a, a, if an explosion happens on our main screen, fire might flow down those three screens. Or at times we have movie posters uh, from all the movies playing. So we are, I think, audio and visually maybe set ourselves apart from any tour that I've seen or looked into, um, but while still trying to give our guests a ton of information. I mean, our poor actors, they've studied for so long, really, because we, there's a ton of information in, in the script. I assume there's popcorn on this tour. I mean, you can't have movies there's, without popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> there is, there's popcorn. We even have a popcorn machine in there. Uh, and we give out big movie candy as trivia prizes. We have trivia going on in between the clips. Um, and so, and then we have, we have, uh, you know, besides our tour guides who are in character, uh, you know, as, a, as Burt Wonderstone, as Paul Blart, as a gorgeous lady of wrestling. Um, but we also have at times uh, uh, other gags in the field, such as 
uh, a flying Elvis that might be at the location where they landed in front of Bally's or Brad Pitt lookalike um, that could be, you know, with the money bags out of Bellagio or, or the hangover guys uh, at their kind of Abbey Road from Hangover 3 where they're, where they're crossing in downtown and where our gift shop is. So we're really trying to pull out all the stops to make it, you know, hit on visually, on script, on location and on gags and fun um, and constantly changing it. So we, we're just constantly reviving it and, and making it a little dif- different. You mentioned the guides and a lot of these guides, I think all of them, if I'm not mistaken, are, are local actors, local performers as tour guides. What was the decision behind hiring actors and performers as your guides as opposed to just hiring I don't want to say regular people, but quote unquote, regular people as your guides. Well, yeah. I mean, I kind of always reach out to what I know or what's around me. Um, and so that the, the team that I kind of launched this with, I think becoming a producer in film and stuff is, is where my niche became was because I didn't know a ton about film per se. I didn't know a lot about cameras. I didn't know a ton about, you know, but uh, I could wrangle, I could wrangle pretty good. Um, and what I, what I can do is kind of wrangle a good team. So, you know, once I found my writer and then I found a creative person to help me with all the logo and stuff that we needed to launch and then, and, and the look of things. And then I reached out to a, a, a guy I knew that, that, that had worked on some of our movies. Um, and I knew he had been a tour guide uh, and then, and then, and then he said, Oh, you know, who else would be great? And she's an actor that I uh, knew of. And, but she also been a tour guide at, um, at um, neon museum. So yeah, it really became, and then another actor that's a stand up comedian um, that, that a friend suggested that I knew of. So these were all people that I kind of knew in my periphery that were just like, Oh yeah, they would be good. Oh yeah, they would be good. And then, and so, yeah, there was no uh, one intention i think before that happened it would just kind of happened organically and and they were the right people and 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 now we have another person coming in um that does have like several several years of of tour guide experience uh so that might even give us a little more uh you know shape us and and our current guides into how can we be better what is what how you know so yeah we're really just almost like a little troop like a playhouse um where we have this great uh office here with a whole area for the actors with costumes and makeup department and their own library of, of dvds with vegas movies and so yeah we're kind of just having fun and 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 running with it and seeing what works and 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 trying to fix the stuff that that isn't working you mentioned that uh the actors they do use a script and obviously i mean you're you're hitting certain points at certain times in the tour and following the same routes all the time i assume how far off the script are the actors allowed to go i mean obviously it's there's probably a certain level of improv and a lot of that probably comes as well from the group that you've got in the bus. If you've got a pretty quiet group, it's okay. We're going to stick with the, with the script, but if you've got a little more of a rambunctious group, are they allowed to kind of go off script a little bit? That's a great question. Yeah. Uh, I didn't know the answer to that pre-launch. So, and, and, and our writer wrote such a great script that, we really wanted them to learn that. And so, and, and I'm not really a director. I don't have a ton of directing experience. So I tiptoed on, on their process, like on the actor's process, because I knew they knew that better than I did. So I just kept saying, Hey, learn as much as you can. And then when you get in there, you're going to know best of how to interpret it with your audience. Just like you kind of said in the question. So once we launched and I got to see, you know, our guides perform, um, I feel like it was the right mix. I feel like they just knew a ton of information that, that we wanted them to know because we are a, still a tour and we, they are guides giving information. But, but also we're a live show that we want people to have fun. We, we, you know, if, and so I did tell you know, them that like, don't worry if you missed some information because there is a ton we're passing stuff and sometimes traffic's faster than other times. And so the, the, the guests aren't going to know what you missed. 
But as long as you have fun and you're flowing with it and, and, and you already know the stories, so come back to it maybe when after. So, so we we constantly play with that. It, 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 I think it is. And, and I don't know what like uh, I, I keep using in, with in, in house like Saturday Night Live or these kind of. But like, yeah, we try to rehearse, rehearse, rehearse and then just get out there and have fun. And, and, and there, therein lies the show. Um, but there, there's, so yeah, there's a ton of information for them to learn. And then once they get out there, I mean, I'm not a stickler for it. I just want the odd guests to have as much fun as possible. And so far the feedback we've heard is, wow, what a great bunch. I couldn't believe how much information was there. We've heard from people and a lot of, and a lot of people like, wow, your tour guides are so fun. And so, so yeah, I think we're hitting that. How long is the tour? How many spots do do you guys hit on a tour? Um, the tour is roughly ninety minutes with a break. Um, we have a current current the current route we we go from Caesar's Palace um, south to Mandalay Bay, and then flip around and go all the way north down the strip past Stratosphere into what's called the Arts District, where we shot our gift shop is located where we where we filmed. Um, Hangover three was Melissa McCarthy's pawn shop where she met Zach Galifianakis and that's where our gift shop is. So we, we go through there and do it like a 15 minute break and then back drops back the guest back at Caesar. So with that 15 minute break, it's about 90 minutes. Um, and I should know that answer of how many properties and locations we actually highlight. And I have answered that before, but I really don't have that off the top of my head right now, but it, I mean, we, we, we don't pass anything from Caesars, you know, Caesars, Bellagio, uh, Aria, Park, New York, New York, Excalibur, Mandalay Bay, back to Tropicana, MGM, um, Planet Hollywood, uh, the dunes we talk about, uh, uh, and then Bally's and, and, and then blah, 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 you know, win, you know, Venetian wind flamingo. So, we don't pass anything that I don't think we mention, except for maybe something newer like the link, which I can't think of anything to film there, um, or uh, something super small that maybe we didn't film that. But even the smallest thing on the strip is probably the pepper mill, and we have a whole pepper mill section. So wow, we we talk about it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I can't think of anything filmed at the link. The only thing I can think of maybe is. Austin Powers when it was Imperial Palace. So when we talk about Austin Powers and we even, you would answer that trivia question, I bet is, is what was a lot of vaginas uh, suite? Where was her suite at in Austin Powers? And the answer is Imperial Palace. (laughs) 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 So yes, we, and, and we do a whole thing on, you know, Riviera and Stardust places that are beloved old properties in the city that are no longer there, um, we recreate on our video screens and we talk about. And so, yeah, we, we do kind of consider ourselves a little bit of a uh, Las Vegas history uh, museum. Yeah, No stops at the Cheetah Club to reenact anything from Showgirls? I would love, as I said, I'd love to. They just this year rebranded it as the library or something. And I mean... It's just boring. The Cheetahs was great. Yeah, Cheetahs was wonderful. But no, yeah, no stop at Cheetahs. I I've been there. I think. In the past, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. No stop at Cheetahs. But but that's a different tour. <laughs> it sure is. Yeah. Um, Chris, if people want to book a tour, and I think they absolutely should, because this sounds like an absolute blast. Um, can you just kind of fill us in on website, social media info, and such? Yes. Um, lvmovietours.com uh, is our website uh, or movietours.vegas. We'll point you to the same thing. Uh, and from there, I have links to our booking site, um, our social media. Our Instagram is uh, Las Vegas Movie Tours, all sp- spelled out. I'll tell you, I answer usually all the social media. I answer the, the email, chris at movietours.vegas. Um, if you want to see this show, you're hearing this and you want to see it and you have a group of people or you have a question or you uh, think the ticket price is too high for you, call me and I will try to do everything I can to make sure that, that you see it because I really do. I just want people to see it and, and see what we did and, 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 and then hopefully talk about it like, like you are. Thank you. So when you're out here, Jeff, I'm telling you, first thing you better do is uh, let me know uh, 
when we can get you on the tour. Absolutely. Chris, thank you so much for jumping on today. This has been awesome. I've really enjoyed this. And uh, yeah, I look forward to uh, to checking out the tour. Thanks. Thank, thanks, Jeff. This was a lot of fun. I really had a great time talking to you. Once again, if you want to check out Las Vegas Movie Tours and book your spot on the tour, visit their website at lvmovietours.com. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram at Las Vegas Movie Tours and on Twitter at LV Movie Tours. As always, links to all these pages are in the show notes at jeffdoesvegas.com. And that wraps up another episode of the Jeff Does Vegas podcast. If you've got feedback on this episode of the show, or any other episode for that matter, or you've got suggestions and ideas for topics you'd like me to cover on the podcast, please feel free to reach out to me via Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Jeff Does Vegas, or drop me an email directly at Jeff at JeffDoesVegas.com. In the meantime, thank you so much for checking out the show. Be sure to follow us wherever you get your podcast so you'll know the moment new episodes are available. And don't forget to visit JeffDoesVegas.com for past episodes and show notes. The Jeff Does Vegas podcast is a Walker New Media production.